Hi, I'm Robert, and today we're going to show you some chair massage techniques you can use on a loved one or friends at home. We have Lucy in just a common everyday chair you might have in your home. And if I was going to use this, I would prefer to have a pillow to be able to give them a little bit of additional cushion. You could use a bedroom pillow or a couch pillow to do this if you don't have a massage chair. This way, when I'm leaning in and giving her some pressure, she has a little bit of cushion. You also want to make sure that the height of the back of the chair is not so high that when she leans forward, it's going to press into her neck at all. So as I'm going along and going to work on someone's back i'll usually use my fingers just to feel the muscles around the shoulder blades and then at the top of what massage therapists would call the cervical thoracic junction which just means where the neck and the thoracic spine meet there are lots of muscles between the shoulder blades and then on top up here where people experience a lot of tension and I'm just using my fingers to become familiar with those muscles to see where I think she may be holding tension. When you do this a lot, you'll get a sense of what tissue tightness and restriction feels like. In Lucy's case, I feel a little bit more tightness right along her paraspinals, meaning by the spine, paraspinal musculature, right in this right side. And then as I go up, a little bit of tightness at the top here, this junction several muscles involved there, levator scapula, trapezius, right in here. And how's the pressure there, Lucy? Good? Does it feel like a tender spot? A little bit more on the right side? Okay. So now that I've used my fingers just to kind of feel my way around, I'm, I don't want to use those constantly. My hands are going to wear out. These are very small muscles and very small structures. What I want to do is use my forearm and elbow. When I use my forearm and elbow, you've got your ulna, this bone right here. It's kind of sharp. Your elbow in particular, very sharp. What I want to try to do is use this broader, softer piece of my forearm flexors, this right here, to be able to apply pressure. So I'm gonna turn and see if I can get an angle. How is that right there? Okay. Now I'm grabbing onto her shoulder, right around what they call the coracoid process and her shoulder joint. The coracoid process, coracoid is Greek, I believe for buzzard or crow, I think it's crow. And it sticks off actually from the shoulder blade, but it's a little point right here where the pec and I believe pec minor attach. I'm holding that so I can pull back and give her a little bit of movement as I'm leaning in here. Just a little bit of jostle gives me a handle, something to grab onto that doesn't feel uncomfortable. And how's this pressure here, Lucy? Okay. Now, if I lean a little bit further forward or lean back, which one do you like? Okay. You like the forward? And you tell me when, about there? Okay. Now, if I come out towards your shoulder or in towards the neck, which one do you like? Out towards the shoulder, right there. There we go. Now, if I give you some jostle, how does it feel compared to just holding still? Okay. So you like the jostle. That little bit of verbal communication really helps me connect with Lucy. It has her understand intuitively that I'm trying to not deliver too much pressure, that I'm trying to make her feel nice uh, doing this. And I'm also trying my best to prevent strain on my own body as I deliver pressure, which means she's gonna get a better massage because I'm not straining and working hard. I'm gonna be able to work on her longer with less deleterious effects on my body. If I hold right there, still good? Okay. I'm going to lift her arm, and I'm going to hook underneath. How's that right there? Okay. Now, I'm using her arm this way just to shake this out so she's not holding any tension. This is the kind of stuff that I just make up and improvise on camera to give her a little pressure. I don't do a ton of uh, seated work or chair work in my private practice, but I show a lot of this to... Uh, students who are doing like chair massage at the airport or working in facilities on a chair. How's that right there? Feels nice. Okay. Now, if I grab a hold of your forearm right here, if I pull you a little bit back or a little bit forward, which one do you like? Say it again. Both feel good. Both feel good? Okay. What if I pull you lateral out to the side? 
pretty good, all right. So I'm using this because I'm essentially from hand to hand, I'm like I'm pulling in opposite directions. I'm able to give her just a little bit of traction there. And if I feel like I'm holding her arm and it's uncomfortable for me, I'm gonna grip right here for a second. How's that? There we go. Just gives me movement across the elbow and across the shoulder joint. Not delivering a huge amount of pressure there. I can always kind of work on her fingers and hands when she's in this position if they'd like. I'm trying to prevent strain on my own body. We'll give her good work. Ooh, right there in the junction in her hand, found that. Then what about your forearm? Ooh, how's that? So have I stopped delivering pressure right here? No. And that's part of the trick, if you will, is if I can work on two or three things at once, I sometimes find it to be more beneficial to the receiver. So as I'm going through, I'm working on her forearm here, and I'm still maintaining pressure there. If I go back and forth, how's that? There we go. In this case, I'm gonna put her arm down just for a second. I'm going to back off and you'll see just this little bit of therapeutic inflammation right through here. She has light, fair skin like I do. So you can see that little bit of pink. I'm gonna use my fingers here and see what happens or how this tissue feels compared to what happened when we started. It feels a little more soft, a little bit more loose. I'm gonna use my thumb to go back and forth across the pair of spinal muscles. I'm trying to see if there's anything else I think should be addressed right in here. How's this, Lucy? A little, a little tender, okay. Is it more tender when I go low? What do you think in there? Look, if you had to choose, which spot would it press in? A little bit lower? Okay, right in there. Is that the spot? There we go. So higher or lower? Or just right there? Okay, so I found a spot and it took just a second there to communicate with her to find out where she was feeling some tenderness. I've used my fingers to find that. It's right next to the spine, just a pair of spinals. I'm gonna kind of mark this spot with my finger and see if I can lean in with an elbow. Now when I lean in with the elbow, I wanna make sure not to press on the spine. As I do that, she'll start to lean forward. I don't mind a little bit of lean forward, but I wanna get some pull back. The way I'm gonna get that pull back is just like we did before, is I'm gonna grab here at the shoulder How's that, Lucy? Okay. Now, is this back here too sharp? Okay. Do you want more pointed? Okay. And then I'm going to bend my elbow. How's that? Adds a little too much right there. There we go. So when she says, oh, that's a little too much, she doesn't get any benefit from me using a tool that's too sharp or sinking too deeply. I'm always going to go slow and I'm gonna give her the amount of pressure that she can handle in her own nervous system. That means if she says, ow, no issue to me, I just back off. If I don't like using a pointy elbow, if I decrease the angle, that makes it more broad. That's more along the entire forearm flexors there. When I do this, probably about right there is what your limit is, yeah. You get a feel eventually. Now when I go back and forth across the pair of spinals, is that too much? No. Okay, the cross fiber feels good. Yeah. So when I say cross fiber, I'm going across the muscles of the spine. I'd actually have to go look them up through the thoracic spine because there are so many of them. But I'm just giving her a little bit of a jostle back and forth, a little bit of a circular motion. If I get tired with that one, one arm, or if I get tired with that grip, I can grab on the other side and see if I can reverse it. How's that? There. Pretty good? There we go. If I had another pillow, if someone really wanted to relax, you could potentially put another pillow up top so they could lay their head down. I just want you to be careful about pushing them forward because you don't want to press them into the edge of the chair through the neck. 
I'm using my thumbs again just to feel through the shoulder blade there. And I think in her case, because she wanted pressure not just at the top, but a little bit lower, I'm gonna see what happens if I bring her arm behind her back. And then, how's that, Lucy? Pretty comfortable, okay. I'm gonna lift my foot up so I can put my knee in the center of her palm. That's gonna help this shoulder blade lift and move. You can probably see from the camera here that as I pull her back, she kind of rolls over my shoulder blade. How's that? Good. Now, I've still got that same handle around the coracoid process and the shoulder. When I pull there, Lucy, it's not like I'm pulling too much skin. It's not, yeah. You just have to modify this to the person you're working on. I like when you ask questions. The reason I ask questions is because I don't work with Lucy every day. I don't want to give her too much pressure. Communicating those things actually makes the session better. Having my knee in her palm just holds her arm in place so she can let go. I have to have a little bit of strength through my legs, my quads, my core to be able to hold that, but it's a nice option. And shake her out again. I want to see where we're gonna go next. And arm down. A little bit lower, how's that? A little tender as well. In this case, I'm gonna slide my shoe off. Now, she's got enough space between her shoulder blade and her spine that I think I can get my knee close to here. This is considered a little bit more advanced technique. You need to communicate with your receiver. I'm gonna bring my foot up and you can see I can get my knee almost right there. She immediately sort of spread her shoulder blades just a little bit. Now, Lucy, if I give you some pressure back, is right there, do you want higher or lower? A little bit higher, okay. So I'm leaning her back a little bit right there. Okay, now my knee is a much bigger, broader tool than this but I think I can deliver pressure by holding across. My middle fingers essentially are on the coracoid process. If I pull right there, Lucy, how's that? Okay, now if you give you some jostle back and forth, is that comfortable? Do you see how um, I'm using the hands to pull her into my knee? How does this feel compared to where the uh, elbow? Um, it's not quite sharp. Okay, just not as sharp. Good option as a therapist, this helps save my hands. Do a little bit higher right there. Now I'm getting close to her spine because of the size of my knee, but it doesn't feel like I'm pressing on your spine, does it? Yeah, that's what I wanted to check. Right there, how's that? Not too much. When I pull towards your edge, just feels nice. There we go. Now, that just gave me an additional option, something I could play with. I often wear shoes I can slide on and off to do things like that. And in her case, even though she was having some tension up here, I wanna see what I can do maybe with her neck without ruffling her hair. I'm gonna lead her head just gently over, and I'm gonna hold again right around the coracoid process around the shoulder and see if I can give her a little stretch forward. So if I just press here, she's gonna lean forward, but if I give just a little bit of resistance, she'll get a little more neck length right there. How's that, Lucy? Good, okay. If you had to choose, would you turn your head down towards the floor or kind of to the side? Okay, how's that right there? Better? Okay. Now, we did a big, large, robust stretch. Now I'm gonna hold with the shoulder. I'm gonna hook the pad of my thumb right here, and I'm gonna slide. No cream or glide here. Just very slowly up the neck, right through that area. Posterior, back of the neck. You don't really go into the side. You don't really go into the front without training. How's that, Lucy? Good. You want another pass? A little closer to the spine or a little further over? A little closer, okay. 
So I'm essentially straight in the back, but I've got a grip here so I can hold. My thumbs are pretty strong. You'll notice I'm only gonna do one or two passes of this before I go to another tool. I've built up a lot of strength in my hands from working this way over the years. So go at your own pace. Go slow, it takes time. How was that? Good. Now, I'm gonna hook in just like before. Lean your head forward for me. There we go. I'm gonna see if I can gently, there we go. She's got enough oil on her skin just naturally that I can engage this little bit of slide up and over. Essentially, the forearm is doing the same thing that the pointy thumb was doing. Which one of those did you prefer, big broad or the thumb? Thumb. thumb. You read the thumb, sharper? Okay. So here's what I'm gonna switch out. I'm gonna see what happens if I hold the other side and then press this way. Using my thumb here, I'm not gonna get exactly the same resistance, but if I hold on this side and use my thumb, I can still slide up and along. She liked that pressure a little bit more. You can see my right fingers hooking in right there to deliver a little bit of pressure. And generally, would you say that you like when your neck goes forward? Some length right there. Here's what I'm gonna have her do. Um, I'm gonna have her lean back just into my belly right there and then lean her head forward. That's gonna allow me to use my fingers. If I interlace the fingers here, I can get a little tool so I can press with the heels of both hands right in there. How's that? Giving her something to lean into feels nice. If this felt too um, uh, intimate to you, you could also do this to create a little more space. Now, can you lean back into that for me? There we go, head forward. Because now I'm not pushing her forward into the chair, but she has a little bit of space between she and I. This is something I would do at a party to work on someone. I'm using the heels of my hand to lean in right along the neck there, a little bit of back and forth. Right there, Lucy, how's that? Good, a little deeper. This gives me a little more pressure without um, concern that I'm pushing her into the chair, kind of compressing in the front through the throat. I can give her some length on either side. As I move her around, I can hook a little bit higher, working my way up towards the top base of the skull. And would you like a little more pressure, Lucy? Sure. Okay. She seemed to like pointed pressure previously, so I'm gonna hook the fingers, but this time I'm gonna use the thumbs, and I'm gonna press just on either side. How's that right there, Lucy? There we go. Just pressing in, posterior spine, posterior neck, back of the neck. Engage a little bit of slide if there's enough skin oil. Don't be afraid to ask for feedback. These muscles, I've done this so many times, it doesn't bother me to go in and press here. But when you're working with someone, just ask them how it feels. A little bit closer to your spine there, right there. There we go. Oh, right there. Put your pillow back here. There we go. To give Lucy a little bit more pressure into this posterior portion of her cervical spine, I'm gonna slide off my shoe and lifting her arm, I'm gonna see if I can put the elbow at a position that's slightly below the shoulder. I'm gonna check in with her about angle and pressure. Does this feel okay? It's like it's not too much on the other joint there. As she leans her head forward, what I'm gonna do is form this nice grip right here so I can hold onto here and have resistance. This means as I press her forward, she's not pressing into the chair, and I've made sure that her hair is out of the way. I just want this posterior portion of the neck right through there, splenius cervicis, splenius capitis. There's a little bit of levator scapula, I think, that goes a little bit more over here. And I can hook my forearm, big, broad forearm, right there, and providing resistance with my right arm, my right leg, I can gently lean and slide forward. And you let me know if that's too much. Okay, Lucy. 
I assume she is almost drooling. You can always use a plastic covered pillow if you're worried about that. Right up towards the base of the skull. Not too much, Lucy. Except she was almost on the pillow. If I wanted to use some flat knuckles right here, not the point, but flat knuckles, I might be able to hook a couple right here just to give her a little bit more sharp pressure. And again, posterior neck. This is along the back of the cervical spine. How's that right there? There we go. I could also use thumbs here, but I used my thumbs before. I always try to just give you some good, you know, options to play with. I'm going to put her arm down, slide my shoe back on, and then allow her to come back to neutral just to feel the difference. We worked on one side, primarily the right side. I would do essentially the same on the left, even if she felt a little tighter on that side. So far, she feels much more loose over here because we work this, and you can see just that little bit of therapeutic inflammation just brings a little blood flow to the surface. How's that feel, Lucy? Good. That's an easy way to work on people at home. Always consider using a pillow this way, and that little bit of resistance in the arm should ha uh, help you deliver pressure into the upper back and the neck. Thank you so much for joining us today. You can find this and hundreds more videos like it on wellnessplus.tv or on our Patreon. We appreciate you spending time with us today, and you can find out more about me, Robert Gardner, at robertgardnerwellness.com. In my 15 years experience as a yoga teacher and massage therapist, I've blended techniques to be able to help students consistently with flexibility, mobility, and by helping them decrease pain in their bodies. As I work with those students to embody, I'm sharing those same techniques with you in this yoga massage course to help you connect with students, increase rapport, and help students just like I have. You're going to be able to, in following the series, work on yourself, help the students work on themselves so that they can embody and you can be a rock star teacher for helping students feel comfortable being their own best educator.